Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Ogre Battle 64. In the last episode, we began Chapter 4, the final chapter for this game, by getting to Giles Hills and defeating the forces of Latium, which were stationed here, a mixture of the Central Division and Lotus's forces. We've discovered that the forces of Lotus believe what they've been told, and that we are responsible for the demons emerging into this world, and are probably looking forward to annihilating us. We, of course, know the truth, that it's not us, but we won't be able to convince them that that was the case. We've picked up the last two Zenobians as well, Gilbert and Destin, during the mission here. And we read the lore at the very end of the episode. And that's about where we are so far. Wow, that was actually a really fast introduction. <laughs> Let me quickly put that part away. Only one take for the intro, but at least three takes now for the army organization. Let's go ahead and look at our forces. So I've done the itemization off screen, as usual. Everyone's got at least two heal seeds, probably one or two heal packs now, an angel fruit and a quit gate. And most of my forces have an altar of resurrection in them, with the exception of Magnus's army? Nope, Magnus' army doesn't have a quit gate in it, right. All right, so I've created Debonar's group a bit differently. We've ditched Bricked. Uh, he Hulk has been moved over to Clifford's army instead. But this army here, may not see combat in its current form. I believe that this Giles Hills is the last location we can acquire a Thunder Dragon and or an Ice Dragon from. A Blue Dragon. And I'd like to have one of them in our army. Every dragon except for one of them. So we can take advantage of their big AoE attack. If we get one... We will add it to Debonair's army, I'm thinking, and we'll shift Gilbert, change his class, and put him into probably Ultra's group, while we move Destin over to Belduke's group, and we'll get rid of the skeletons in those forces. I think that's the plan. Alternatively, we can take out the Hawkmen, and the, ra the Ravens, and make a flying troop. So it's something to think about, and we're probably going to have to make that decision before we do the training after the area exploration here. Alright, well anyway, let's go ahead and, and do the itemization. I've already uh, done the squadron, as I mentioned earlier, stuff, and so we're... Oh, I don't know why I'm pressing that button. So let's go ahead and just sell whatever we don't need and equip whatever we do. So I don't remember picking up any helmets. Yep. No extra helmets around, so we can just skip that altogether. We did pick up a few new weapons, if I recall correctly. So let's just immediately go to... Actually, no. We want to go to... Yeah, you want to keep selling items, Tim. Stay here. And look, uh, look at your wep at your weapons. Uh, some madness that we're not using any longer. Right, we gave a better lightning sword to Magnus, didn't we? I forgot that we did that. What are you using, Magnus? That's not Magnus. Oh! No! He unequipped his son, Madness, because he got promoted to a new class. He's now a general. Okay, well, I, I should have checked that some time ago. <coughs> so he lost three points of damage. <laughs> was it four points of damage he lost? Three. <coughs> Alright, well, now he's got his son, Madness, again. Do we have a better weapon for him? Fafnir. Sword used by an ancient hero to slay the evil dragon Fafnir. That would greatly improve his damage even more if I want him to have this. I think we do. Why not? Why not give him even more damage? This is just pure physical though, not air, based on the fact we have Sonic Blast in the back rank. Or we could wait till perhaps we get a better lightning weapon. Who else would really benefit from that new Fafnir sword, though? Quite a few people. Dio has a glam drink. Oh, I guess we should put that... Well, we... Ah, 
I'm a bit over the place at the moment, everyone. I'm sorry. So we picked up another glam drink. So why not give that... Oh, because that decreases his strength. Ice Blade's better. <coughs> I kind of like a Balder Sword and Pei Long. Destin, Destin probably has a really great weapon at the moment anyway, so we don't need to give something to him. Ice Blades are better. Ivanhoe... I like the idea of you using a holy weapon, but on the... Oh, and this doesn't actually improve your strength beyond it, does it? Fafnir gives you six more points of damage. Sure, we'll give Ivanhoe Fafnir. So we have an extra glam drink. Theo's already wielding one. Bumba's using the evil blade. I guess, I think this is better than the Sword of Fire Drake, isn't it? By one more strength. Alright, there we go. Alright, what other items do we have? Was that the last of the... No, we, we did pick up a few other weapons. We got another battle fan. I'm just going to hold on to that, I suppose. Sanction is not better than what we currently are wielding. Durandal. A great sword. So that's for use by one of our sword masters. A rune axe, a two-handed weapon. Kargibai, another great sword. Yadressel. Okay, so we have two-handed weapons. Or Yadressel, I think is what it's actually called. So, Fordham's already using Matsuka Makoao. <laughs> Matsukaze. So, how are these better than that? No. Same amount of strength. Well, they do increase his strength a little bit, but I think we'll keep him with that weapon that he's currently got. Connick should have a better weapon than the Glee for the Champion, though, by now. Durandal? Or the Kageribai? What is this weapon? Daito, exotic longsword of the East that became engulfed in flame when brandized. Or Durandal? The lost technology of the ancient Mistralians entrapped the power of Bane in this sword. Sure, we'll give you an evil looking weapon. Oh, that, I sounded sad. No, I'm not sad about that at all. That, that's great. Child the Hog. Oh, I get the impression we don't have anyone else who can wield two handed weapons, Tim. I think you're uh, two handed swords. I think you're done with those. I'm imagining that Sigmund is better for Destin than the Kagari Bai. Actually, it arguably is not. But I'll keep, let him keep it. Debonair must keep using his Sonic Blade. There is no one else who can wield two-handed swords except for St. George. And he's got the Sword of Tiamat. Which is the which is his default weapon, I believe. Yep. So is a Kagari buy better for him? Adds more dex, loses a little bit of strength, loses some defense. Nope. He keeps his current weapon. So then we have a two-handed sword I'm not going to put on someone. Unless you feel like making Gilbert a different class. I guess we should do that. We don't need another Beastmaster, so we could make him another Swordmaster instead. He's got the alignment for it currently. We could make him a Vampire, <laughs> but let's make him a Swordmaster. He's not wielding any phenomenal gear, so I don't mind this change for him. And we'll give him the Kagari Bai. We have any better armor for him. We did pick up flame leather, which is better for him. So let's give him that. And I don't think we have a better helmet for him, though. We do not. Okay, then he'll stick with what he's got. So three attacks each of these characters in the front rank. That's pretty amazing. And they're all super strong, I think, attacks, too. If I was to move someone to the middle rank... You lose a, a slash. 
Destin keeps his slash even in the second rank. So let's mix it up a little bit and do something like this. You know what we could do, Tim? Well, I gotta be a little careful. If I do this, this group of three could be targeted by AoEs. And you don't want do being targeted. Do this. Okay, what else do we have for weapons? Actually, I think that would... No, we have a two-handed axe. At least one. Ultra is using Molgenair. Let's see. Yadrasel does more damage, changes his attack to Earth. The Rune Axe gives him even more damage. And more defense. Let's give him the Rune Axe. And Rook is using Erdebrun. Yadrasel is better. So we'll give him that. We have no better heavy armor. We have no better helmets at the moment. We really gotta keep an eye open for bolder helmets so we can buy them and give them to some of our characters. Did we pick up anything else? That was all of those. We picked up no special books. I don't believe we got a better shield. We have an extra dragon shield, but we have no one who really need needs it. I think we equipped the only new set of armor we picked up last episode. Oh, no. Nope, that's, the, that's titania mail. Yep, I don't see anything new there. No new miscellaneous equipment. And I think we picked up a handful of... Yes, we picked up a handful of stat improvement. One Mirror of Soul and one Crown of Intellect. So let's use Mirror of Soul on someone who could be, who potentially could be stoned or slept or something. And I think we'll give it to Clifford. Give him three more mentality. And the crown of intellect. I'm tempted to give this to Adora, who I'm probably going to make our princess when we get a chance. But I'm fairly confident I'm going to do that. Actually, well, let's just hold on to it at the moment, then. We have a champion statue as well to get plus one level, but I'm not going to use it on anyone at this moment. We'll just hold on to that. I want to see what level the dragons are, assuming that we can get one from this area. We should also probably head to the Temple of Birth to investigate all the cities here and see what the people say now that we're not fighting for this location. So we're probably going to do two area investigations next episode. We know, though, that there's no items left in this location, and I don't believe there's any items left here either, because we've been to Giles Hills before, and I'm pretty sure we cleared it out. So it's just going to be visiting all the cities. I think that's the only thing I, I will have planned. And we might hunt for a special dragon in Giles Hills, if there are any. Anyway, that's it for the army organization, so I'll be right back to do one of these area invest uh, explorations. Give me a second. Alright, guys. Let's go ahead and get the area investigation done for Giles Hills. This will be very simple, though, compared to other ones that I have done, because we don't need to explore this area for any equipment. We've already searched... Giles Hills pretty thoroughly the last time we were here, so I'm not expecting to find any equipment here. We would like to get a blue and thunder dragon from this area, assuming they are here, but... But... I already got them from here! I'm reshooting the area investigation because I was chatting with you guys about the games I played in 2021. But I didn't like how it came out, because I went on several tangents and I babbled incoherently about a few things, so I'd like to redo it. So, we're going to go ahead and visit all the cities in this location, see what the people there are talking about, and then leave. And during that time, I can chat about the thing I was just talking about. So last time I did this, I was talking a, quite a bit about what the games were like, 
And I didn't like that very much, because I don't have an outline in front of me. And then I began reviewing some of the games, and I don't like that either. Because I feel to properly review a game, I need to sit down and write all my thoughts out, document what I thought about the different aspects of what makes a video game a video game, the graphics, if it has a story, the story, the controls, the gameplay, replayability, what's the sound like, what's the music like, are there any bugs or glitches with the games, how was the ending, how long was it, there's a whole huge mess of things to chat about when I review a game. And so I didn't like it how I was doing it. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to go ahead and I'll mention the name of the game I played and I'll mention one thing I liked about the game. One, uh, or maybe one or two things I liked about the game, one or two things I didn't like about the game, and if I give the game zero, one, or two thumbs up. All right, let's get going. So first, before we do that, though, we want to send our people out to the different areas. I think we'll send everyone to a stronghold and that will do. The area, by the way, has blue dragons in it. It has... Thunder Dragons and Cerberus in it, from what I have seen so far. I think the Cerberus are in the mountains? The Thunder Dragons are totally in the barrens, and the swamps have the blue dragons in it. Let's get everyone marching to their cities. Everyone goes to a city, they speak to the people there. And then I turn around and leave. With that with that group. That's the plan. I guess Magnus, we can head send you out too. Well, since you're the one who needs to be back at the city, so we, well, not actually we can just leave whenever we want. But you guys know how I do this by now. Everyone walks out, and everyone who walks out has to walk back. They have to walk back. That's they have to. <laughs> they just they just have to, viewer. They have to. Alright, let me give everyone a sign and then we'll go ahead and do the thing. Let's see, Meridia. Let's see, we'll have you go here. I think there's one more city to go to. Let's see. Uh, Devon here? You're not moving. So we'll send you here. And that's the last city. There's actually a special encounter with Devon at the city I'm sending him to. Uh, I think we can deploy one more person, right? No, we can't. Who's, who's not moving? I'm, I'm not moving. All right, let's go ahead and put myself all the way down here. Okay, so here we go. Last year, in 2012, so normally I do this near the end of the year for all the games I played during that year. And I do it when I record a game like Grim Dawn or another action RPG of some sort or a game that doesn't require much thought, but I can chat with you guys as I watch the game or I have it on in the background as it gives me a chance to focus on the things I want to talk about, and not the gameplay itself. The area investigation fits that bill very nicely, so we can do that here as well. First, let's have Bruto stop in the city here. Lotus is back in Latium, right? That means when you defeat the Central Division, you'll end up fighting Lotus. Well, since the Platinum Army is useless, we have to rely on the Revolutionary Army. Interesting. The Platinum Army, I don't think, was useless. It was distracted and didn't care about so perhaps some of these people's problems. But I think they cared about others. The the forces of the Western Division definitely did. They had the backing of the people. It was why we had a peace accord with them and agreed to it, actually. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started with this. So, this is from 2021, so two years ago almost. First game, Duskers. I liked... The macros you could create for the UAVs you controlled in that game. You could issue a series of commands and basically save it off as a macro and then issue it. And your UAVs would do the things in the order that you told them to do it in. It reminds, reminds me of bash scripting or, or writing a Python script since I do that sort of thing for work. I thought it was a very unique way to do it. And I liked how the game was balanced with trying to gather resources, but the longer you stayed on the ships that you were exploring, the more dangerous they could be. And how you really kind of wanted to avoid combat, at least early on. I thought the resource management was good. And Bubba, let's send you in here. 
I heard that you guys liberated Alba and Wetanus, and allied with the East Orthodox Church. You don't fear the Latium army or Lotus anymore, right? You gonna finish them off? No, we're not Lotus. We're not the Brigade of the Radiant Cross. Our objective isn't to convert other people and beat them until they agree with us. We just want a peace accord with those people who might not agree and has to be left alone. Maybe though we'll have to beat, uh, invade Lotus to stop them from invading other people. Give peace a chance or we'll kill you. What I didn't like about Duskers, it was abandoned by the developers for a few years. They left a bunch of uh, run crippling bugs and glitches in it. I encountered one of them, which made it so that I would the game wouldn't it wouldn't start. Like the game would launch, I could play the a mission and explore a derelict, but nothing happened in it that could potentially threaten me, because unless you entered a very specific command. The game didn't think you actually left your spaceship, so everything was just sitting there, waiting to start. I also did not like the way the game took away your visuals of the schematics of the ship you were exploring. I thought that was an awful decision to do. It's one of the best things in the game to be able to interact with the ship by your macros, and by issuing commands, by typing them in to tell your UAVs to go places rather than control them manually. And by removing that, the uniqueness of the game, I thought, was removed as well. I hated that decision. I've heard, however, in retrospect, that the devs revisited the game. They came back, they were alive after all, and I've heard that they fixed almost all the glitches, if not all of them have been addressed now. Anyway, uh, I give Duskers no thumbs up, though, because of my encountering those glitches, and for the few years the developers had abandoned it. I also really hated, and still hate, the removal of that schematic view from the ships. If I was to play it again fresh, I'd probably give it just one thumbs up, because I really dislike, again, this movement of the schematics, though. But my experience with the game was very negative, and I stopped playing it after about eight videos or so. We played through Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark in 2021. I liked the leveling system in that game. It was Final Fantasy Tactics, and the combat, the gameplay, was fantastic in it. Again, Final Fantasy Tactics, very similar to it. A little bit more difficult given the increased amount of passives you could give to your people. I also liked the DLC I had, which added the mission jobs you could send your people on in order to gather equipment, gear, consumables, and components outside of the actual fighting, so you could farm off-screen, basically, if you so desired. Rather interesting take on it. You could effectively not play the game and still level everyone up. You could abuse that, but I never felt the need to do so, so... So you're back from the east, huh? Did you enjoy your trip? Did they try to brainwash you and stuff like that? <laughs> oh, the uh, Church of Birth, huh? Birthism. I guess she doesn't agree with them. Yeah, I knew it. That's to be expected. It's interesting meeting people who are so different, isn't it? That statement doesn't really follow your other ones. But that is a true statement. I love meeting people who are quite different and learning about their culture. Meeting people from different countries. A lot of you viewers aren't from New Jersey. What the heck? <laughs> There's a whole world out there. All right, let's begin moving you back. What I didn't like about Felsu Arbiter's Mark. The story was very simple. And I saw everything from a mile away. <laughs> I also disliked some of the very large battles. As it was impossible for me to keep track of what was what each individual enemy was capable of, and the enemy certainly liked to take advantage of your mistakes. Although, I did like the vast amount of configurable options you had when it came to setting up how you wanted the game to be played. You could set the difficulty of the AI and fine tune it to certain things. Like you could say, I always want the enemy AI to be my level, or I want it to be at a, there, I want there to be a max level, and the AI doesn't go higher than that, so I can outlevel it if you want, for example. I thought a lot of that stuff was rather unique. 
Overall, for Felso Arbiter's Mark, since I'm not giving it a review, just a quick summary, I'd say I give Felso Arbiter's Mark two thumbs up. It was a great game. I really enjoyed it. By the way, I apologize if it sounds like I'm shouting. I have, I have on a new headset now, and my own voice sounds muffled. I'll have to listen to this when I'm done with this episode to make sure I'm not screaming into the microphone. I played Thief the Dark Mod. Thief the Dark Mod. Let's see, what did I like about it? I liked that they nailed perfectly, absolutely 100% perfectly, the feeling of the Thief series. Even more so than the Thief series did, in my honest opinion. I liked how difficult the AI was in the Dark Mod. Significantly more perceptive and tricky to sneak around than it was in the Thief series itself. I liked the attention to detail, the way Shadows played out, the game engine that they developed and used for it as well. I think actually it's Quake 3 engine. They did a phenomenal job. Really, really happy with it. The music, the sound effects, and everything. I did not like... The combat, the melee combat in that game. And one second, we'll talk about that in a bit. Let's go into the stronghold with Dismiss. Hey! You're a revolutionary soldier, right? Your allies were here a while ago. Did you run into them? Huh? Who am I talking about? Those guys from Zenobia. They were looking for somebody. For us. I guess if you come here after the battle with Magnus... Or Debonair. Maybe you can talk with them then. Once I get to Debonair is here, we'll have him go in and say hello as well. I remember you. You were here the other day. How's your buddy doing? It's cool you found your friends. The melee combat in that game is the worst melee combat I have ever played in any FPS game ever created, ever. It is abysmal. I will just reset the game, I'll reload a save if I'm caught and have to defend myself. It is terrible, it is awful, I curse and swear at it whenever I'm forced into it, and I try not to think about it because of how terrible and awful and abysmal <laughs> the referencing combat is in the Dark Mod. It is just the worst. Absolutely the worst. I hate it. I hate it. Overall, though, I can give Thief of Dark Mod two thumbs up. It's also free, by the way. But, but one last thing about the Dark Mod, I feel like the public to say this, the Dark Mod itself is not a game. It is a game launcher and a game engine that lets you download and then play missions, maps, other people made for the Dark Mod. There's like, there's a, roughly like a hundred or so maps made. And the ones I played, at least, were really great. I liked all of them. Even the swing. Although I wasn't in the mood to play the swing when I fired it up. Hmm. Should I support you? Or bail to Latium? I'll have to decide soon enough. I was wondering. You think you guys are gonna win? I hope so. As long as we can stop Lotus or the Caligus Order from bringing in more demons, we have a fighting chance at least. Oh, Clifford Lee, we can have you go into this. Oh, we're we're in several cities. Let's go into these cities. We'll talk more about the games. The path in front of Etil Castle goes to Latium. However, the road to Latium is not as easy as you think. There's Fort Romulus, a stronghold built by the people of Indigo. Until the progenitor came to power, it was impenetrable. That will be our first siege. The next mission is a two-parter. I don't think we'll be allowed to leave after we make our assault in that area. And we won't be able to explore the area until after we have dealt with Fort Romulus or Castle Romulus. There's a rumor of some past incident between the Kingdom of Palatinus and Lotus. I don't know the details, though. Things change quickly. You should be cautious. 
Yeah, we now have demons present in our world. I wonder how many of them were able to get through the portal before we were able to shut it down. It seems the Eastern Orthodox Church is behind you. Your back is covered. Now you can concentrate on Latium's army. How'd you ever get them to support you? Easy. We just had to clear Bishop Orderon's name after fighting through undead and other monsters to reach him. We got ambushed but survived it, and then we had to close a demon gate <laughs> and defended the Temple of Birth. No problem. See? Piece of cake. Piece of cake. One second. I, I, we're almost at the last city with Trimus, so once that occurs, we'll visit that city and then we'll be moving everyone else back. I say Trimus, it's Magnus who's here. The Aristocat? Aristocats? <laughs> We're not watching that cartoon. The Aristocrats are scrambling to cover their asses. Their slaves have turned against them. Their soldiers have abandoned them. They're in deep shit. I thought the upper class wasn't all that bad. I'm sure some were. Unless it's a very specific group of the... Maybe like the upper crust of the upper class are the ones fleeing. Alright! We played through Vaporum Lockdown in 2021. I liked the graphics! Vaporum is one of the prettiest first-person real-time, dungeon-crawl, grid-based combat games I've played. I liked the setting. I liked that the giant uh, tower that you are exploring, it feels like a experimental tower where they were conducting research on that strange gas, uh, Fumium. I disliked the gameplay. They changed it from a from centering around combat with puzzles in between, to centering around puzzles with combat in between. It's still a decent game, but it wasn't... It's not the same thing. I am I beat the first Vaporum Lockdown about eight times with different builds to see how much... To see if I could do it and see how different they felt. And they felt very different from each other. I very much liked the first Vaporum. The second Vaporum, I will never ever play it through it again. <laughs> the puzzles just take so long, and they're not any different. I felt like it wouldn't matter what my combat build was, because combat was extremely easy compared to the first Vaporum. So, well, there you have it. I give Vaporum Lockdown one thumbs up for that. We played through Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic in 2021. I liked the story <laughs> and the voice acting. I thought it was great. It was a one of the few games I've played that Star Wars related that I thought was well done. And I remember the first time I had played it, I did not quite guess the plot twist. So that was that was pretty amazing when it happened. I did not see it coming. I did not like how the light side, dark side stuff was done. Uh, I felt it was very... Evil is very childish evil. It's very, like, uh, you get a choice. The choice is, uh, like, there's someone in the street who needs some money. Your options are, give them what they're asking for. Uh, get some light side points. Give them more than what they're asking for. Give them more light side points. Oh, hey, Clipper Lee gets a fight on the way out. Or... Kick him in the teeth and then stab him in the gut. Get some dark side points. Like, those are your choices. Or it felt like that that was what it amounted to. Very odd. Very odd. The combat was also quite fickle, but still fun. I like the combat animations in it. I give Star Wars Lights of the Republic one thumbs up. It was good. It was good. We played Hard Reset, a first 
first-person shooter arena combat game, similar to Serious Sam 3. Arena shooter, I think is. Is that right? Is that what you call it? There were parts where we it wasn't in an arena, but most of it was. It very similar to Serious Sam 3. I liked the graphics. Uh, this was the original hard reset, which I very I was surprised how pretty it was for a game made in like 2009 or so, or 2008. That just shows that I play mostly games that, are, that look like this. Not that this game looks bad, but I'm used to games made in like the late 90s, early 2000s. It tends to be the gameplay, the game that I game types and graphics that I play most of the time. I like the combat and the guns. It was fun. I liked how your one gun shape, shape changed to other guns when you fought uh, the enemies. And they used, I thought they used different types of ammunition as well, if I recall correctly. I disliked hard mode, which was a shame because I, it was a bit too bullet spongy, the enemies. And in particular, the Gorilla Bots did, I felt, a little too much damage for my liking. I ended up in one situation where I could not defeat the three or four Gorilla Bots that put me in too much of an enclosed space. I died about 25 times, and I threw in the towel on the Let's Play. But I had been playing the game again, not recording it on normal mode, which I found a lot more fun, a lot more forgiving, felt about right, still died a few times, and I took over on normal mode and completed it. I disliked the story, which I thought was rather cheesy. Uh, it didn't make a whole lot of sense whatsoever. Had a lot of language for what I think was language's sake. We had a badass character who acted badass because he's a badass. And a, lo a lot of, uh, I'm going to call it, uh, techno-drivel. <laughs> Just fancy cyberpunk words that didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me in the situations when, where they were being used. I give Hard Reset one thumbs up. We played Underrail in 2021. That was when I finished with Gabriel Angelos and began playing the game with Decker. Underrail's a great game. I like almost everything about it. The uh, game is balanced very well. There are some abilities which are not very useful, but on the whole, I think it's really great. Uh, combat is fun. It's very difficult. You have to understand how all the mechanics work. Crafting uh, is better than the gear that you find, for the most part. I really like that, too. It rewards you for investing in it. The stories are well-written as well. It's got some of the better writing in a game I have played. Not all of it is on par with other bits of writing, but overall, I think it matches up with something like Planescape Torment. The DLC, some of the writing there especially, was really well done. And I like the, the world setting. I dislike Oh man What do I have I have to dislike something about it cuz it it can't be a perfect game There's a few things here or there that I think it lacks If I had to say something I dislike then I will say that Wow. <laughs> I have three entire Let's Plays of it up on my channel, which is about 300 hours or more of gameplay. Okay, I like the balance, but I dislike the balance. Some, as I mentioned, some skills or disciplines are not very useful. Uh, they fall by the wayside compared to others. And some you will never take, they're just not useful. I wish the game was able to be modded so that these could be brought into line with other skills and disciplines. There aren't that many of them, but those that are not very good, they stand out from the rest as this is awful. Why would anyone take this, for example? And there are some skills which are vastly more powerful than others as well, I suppose. But again, overall, considering all of the, the perks and feats that are available in the game, I think they did a good job balancing it on the whole. 
Similar to this game, Ogre Battle 64, where the classes are generally balanced pretty well. There are a few which are much better than others, there are a few which are much worse than others, but on the whole, I think they... I think it's decent. They did, they did a good job on it. I give Underrail two thumbs up. And that's it with the area investigation, everybody. What'd you guys think? All right, so I'm going to go and cut this, and when I come back, we'll be ready to do some training. We probably should go to the Temple of Birth, actually, and do this area investigation, because we won't have a chance really to do that. Yeah, we'll do this one, too. I guess we'll do that next. All right, guys, so when I come back, we'll do this area, invest area investigation. Just as before, we know we found all the items. We don't need any monsters from this area. So we're going to just visit the cities and then leave. And I'll talk about more games. Give me one second. Hey, everyone. All right. Let's go ahead and investigate the Temple of Birth. But before we do, I might be a little... Slow to speak at the moment. I am really exhausted, but in a good way. I got plenty of sleep last night, and I just got back from hiking up in the mountains in North Jersey. That was a lot of fun. It was today, today I'm recording this particular part of this video, is October 28th. It's 7.13 p.m., and I got back about two hours ago, and it was peak autumn foliage up there at Hartshorn Park is where I went. And oh, it was wonderful. I walked for about nine miles and I have not gone nine miles in about uh, probably close to eight months. <laughs> so, oh, oh, I really needed that. That was that was very good. I gotta, I gotta lose a lot of weight, viewer. The only way that's gonna happen is if I get out there and start walking. Probably, Probably didn't help that I had McDonald's this evening. <laughs> whenever, so whenever I go out on a hike, like, and I, and I walk nine miles or so, I celebrate by having something bad to eat when I get back home. But I, I don't overdo it when I eat uh, it, as my celebratory dinner upon arriving back home. It's not like I had 12 quarter pounders and a, and a 16 chicken piece nugget or something of the sort. Nope. It's a... Uh, only about 1,000 calories, which is what I normally eat around my dinner time. That's that's my calorie count for, for dinner. So, uh, I hopefully we'll still be losing some weight. Good Lord knows I gotta lose like 25 pounds. Alright, well anyway, no one cares about that. Let's go ahead and get our people deployed. Get them out to visit all these different cities. And we know that there are no missed items here at the Temple of Birth because we use dowsing rods to find anything that might be out here. I thought we weren't allowed to come back here, so we kind of wasted the dowsing rods, but, well, too late. <laughs> what am I going to do? And there's no monsters that we need from this location either. We're not adding anything else that's in here to our army unless we happen upon a raven or something of the sort, or a, a, a Volton while walking on these roads. So I guess what we can talk about as we're doing this is we can go back to talking about the games I recorded at during t the year 2021. But first, we arrived at the city. Let's head send Magnus inside. A knight from Lotus was here. He had few companions, but he must have been... Richard Glendale, the head of the Caligonous Order. I got a bad feeling about this. I hope something bad doesn't happen. Please save us. God, please protect us. Didn't they not want us here earlier? But, well, then again, the situation Tim has, <laughs> has drastically changed with the appearance of demons from a spot where they thought it was holy and it turned out to be the opposite. But, but what's happening in Surmi? Forbidden power. Why is it forbidden, you ask? Because sacrifices are needed to acquire it. The forbidden power can transform terrain, change climates, and sap life force. It can reverse time. It's an abomination of nature. This power is great, but be weary of your limitations. Weary? 
Wari, I think. Now, like, I have any reason to criticize the writing when it's considering how often I mispronounce... <laughs> mispronounce things. And I guess I guess we're probably not going to get a chance to talk about other video games, guys, for a little bit because my people are arriving at the cities. Let's see. Ultra, what's happening inside whatever place this is? Sarahart, I think. I love the background for this one. Centuries ago, just as the progenitor reclaimed the land from the indigos, the one who claims this ultimate power may deliver us unto peace. Possibly, Yuma wanted power to bring changes to the kingdom. Hopefully it won't corrupt him, as it has other people who have given in to the... Uh, the dark power. Alright, Belduke, what's happening? The Temple of Birth. I think Odoron will be here, right? Oh, no! Hey! Where are you guys going? The temple has collapsed. There's nothing but rubble in there. It's dangerous. Don't even think about getting in. So they have guard station outside as well. Alright, that's fine. Well, can we cover some stamina before we send her back home? Oh! There's earth dragons here. I don't think Lottery's... Well, we might kill it. We might kill it with Lottery. That takes into the pumpkin head doing an incredible amount of damage to it. Yeah, I think it's dead. Good job, Lottery, sticking in another... Holy crap, and you, you and Metha leveled. Sneaking in a free fight? A free experience points? That's that's great. That reminds me, we still need to do training also, Tim. Eh, won't say no to a heal seed. That's 50 goth we don't have to spend. Penelope, what's happening in the city? It's good to know you're safe. Uh, by the way, what was in the temple? Why were demons there? I guess it wasn't a temple of mother birth after all. No, it totally was. It's just that your god is not... Uh, is involved in more things than you would think she is. I guess we should say. El Duke will send you back home now. Yes, everyone has to walk back. <laughs> oh, I sent Bruno and Penelope both here. That's a bit awkward, because both of you guys can then head back uh, home together. Magnus, you are back here. We'll wait for the rest of the army. All right, guys. So, well, we'll talk about other video games once these two people arrive at the cities and see what see what the discussion is from the folks inside of them. And Bruno, we can, I guess, start moving you back home. I will admit that one of the reasons why I bring people back home is just in so to see if they do get their random encounter since it does give me a chance to earn a little more experience points. But I've always done this too, where I feel like everyone should go back to the HQ, and then we leave the area. Lottery. Oh, what's for sale here, by the way? Armets, Frozen Axes, Ulzerix, Spear. I don't feel like we need any of this. I guess, let's purchase one Ulzerix Spear. And we'll let Lottery's stamina uh, fatigue recover. Astrid, you're probably tired, so just in case you have an encounter, let's rest you. And Lottery, anything cool happening in here? Since you and Lotus stepped foot on this soil, our sanctuary has been in chaos. Please, please leave. You and your demons have sullied our temple. Leave us in peace. You have angered Mother Birth. No, no, it didn't. I mean, I can understand this point of view. But blaming other people for things that are out of your control and for things you don't understand fully, it's, uh... It's not very wise. 
No, your your mother birth that temple was a chaos gate. Mother birth is not uh well, it's again, she's involved in more things than than you would know about, sir. Bell Duke's back home. Astrid reaches the city. How about now? No. Now? No. Now? There she is. Alright, Astrid. The final city. Hey! What happened? What happened to those monsters? Uh... I talked to the guy with horns. Uh, to the blue guy with horns. My mother told me not to. But... I wasn't afraid at all. Wow! Interesting. Maybe... Well, nothing says the demons have to kill someone who communicates with them. Nothing says they even have to necessarily be evil. Maybe maybe they're the good guys. Although that one... I, I thought one demon was talking about bringing, like, you know, the evil into, into our world. Maybe they have a different concept of what evil actually is compared to what we know as evil. Alright guys, we got a, like, oops, we got, like, maybe two minutes, so what's another game we can talk about really quick, or not so really quick? So we've got Mainframe Defenders, was a game we played in, I played in 2022. This was one where it had been in my Steam backlog for a year, and when I fired it up to play it, I didn't realize how amazing this game was. It's it, it moved into my top 20 for sure. I guess I, I haven't figured out where in it it is currently. But it's a turn-based strategy game where you control a group of robots. You choose which ones you want and what their is starting layouts will be. And then you do a series of missions. You get a choice of them for loot and cash, basically. And there's a total of about, uh, I think, 15? 14, 13 or so missions, missions, and the game ends. It's a lot of fun. Uh, oh, right, I'm supposed to say if, if I like what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. Oh, Astrid, nice. Astrid has an Earth Dragon to fight also. I, uh, I don't think you kill it, Astrid. It's got too many hit points. This will reduce it to like 70 something. Oh. It's sticking around, though, so we will kill it after all. Nice. I liked... I liked almost everything about the game. I guess, in particular, though, Tim, you, you can't say that. That's too, that's too cheesy. You gotta pick two things you like and one thing you didn't like, if, if possible. I like the balancing of the units, the missions that you go on, and the vast majority of the items, I feel, has been really well done. You have just enough uh, that you can... Uh, when, you, when you get to the end of the game, you have just enough funds to potentially level up every one of your squadron mates all three times. And it's, it's tricky... You have to really, you gotta really do, uh, go for some tough missions to do that. But I really, I really enjoy it. I like trying out new equipment in the game on my different units to see if I can find a use for some of the more tricky gear. And I really like the how how unique the game can be if you're willing to go off to try different builds for your units. I like experimentation in particular with the games I play, and trying a bit of everything on all the units if, if, if a game lets me do that. I'm not making a whole lot of sense, just there's a lot of variety in the game, and I like trying different, different combinations of gear with different types of units to see if I can make something work that would be a little less powerful than other types of combinations. And this game has a large variety of different weapons, miscellaneous equipment, and other uh, activated items that you can use. I 
guess I should wrap up Wing Fit Defenders really quick. What else did what else did you like about it? I like the music also. It's great synth wave. <laughs> I really like the music. I I definitely have acquired all uh, like the soundtrack for the game, so I've been listening to that uh, occasionally while I work. I dislike. Let's think here. So what what would I dislike about this game? I guess if I had to be nitpicky, and this isn't a, generally a big turnoff to me, it is a bit hard to see what the different units are. Uh, graphically, the game is not the best, but I don't care about that sort of thing generally. But if I had to, to once again, be nitpicky, I would say that, uh, it could probably be a little easier to see what it is that you're fighting. Although, to be fair, I do, rec I do recognize all the different units having played the game for about a hundred something hours, so. All right, so. Oh, maybe we should do, okay. So I'm gonna put a small break here and we'll be back to do the training. So give me a second. Okay, guys, let's do some training here at the Temple of Birth. I guess I should quickly say that when it comes to the dragons we picked up, the Thunder Dragon and the Blue Dragon, that I'm going to not assign them to a squadron yet. I like all the squadrons I have, including the new one I made with Debonair leading it. So, when we go to Romulus, we have a single love and peace. We will see if we can use that to get ourselves a new unit leader when we go there. So that's the plan. Alright, so with that said, let's go ahead and get some training done. I have five groups that want training, and I've got 26,000 goth. I'm willing... Yeah, so let's go ahead and see how much it costs us to train here. Penelope, Bumba, Clifford Lee, Dismiss, and Belduke are the ones up for training here. Let's start with Belduke. It's going to be about 6,000 goth. I, I'm fine with that. Let's do it. Talk about good timing. I was getting bored. Here, I'll take you on. Fight me. Uh, a respectable group. Two archers in the back, three, two phalanxes, phalanxes in the front, and one... I forget what the big guy's called. <laughs> Cataphract. Oh, what is... Nice! I very rarely see an Inferno cast. Wow, this group, man. This is awesome. Oh, wow. We did not need 94 experience points on those two. We only needed like 30-something. 74 for the others. All right, Belduke's done. Let's go ahead and send in Dismiss next. happy that you stopped by to train, but do you believe that strength is everything? If so, then don't expect to progress any further. No golem? With an enchanter and a doll master, and then three hawkmen. Very awkward fighting positions, too, here. But they do... That enchanter has three attacks on the front line. Uh, we might lose at least one person in this fight. Just because of all the damage they're going to do uh, in, in a round. Oh, wow. Good. One dead. Next round. Oh, never mind. We'll have... Unless they get a lucky crit. Oh, okay. It's over. It occurs to me, guys, we're going to be getting Draconite books soon. Who's going to get them? In the past, 
I've always felt that giving a Dragonite book to a army where it has multiple spellcasters in it is a bit... Well, okay. No. Well, yeah, let's talk about it really... No, let's not... Mm -mm. We'll talk about Dragonite books when we get them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Let's let's go back to training. Let's have Clifford Lee go next. Too much babbling. Another 1,144. Is this the same group we fought earlier? Ooh, a tougher group. Three Freyas, two Valkyries. Our goal is to grow in both mind and body. It is against our will to fight. But if it promotes growth, we accept your challenge. They combine spells against Clifford and I forget who else is in his army there, the Paladin. It will be a bit tricky. Oh, wow. A combined Thunder Flare. That's, that's bad. If you guys can kill one of those Valkyries in the back, that, I would greatly appreciate that. Looks like the Paladin's dropping. There's no way he's going to survive another hit from the girl with the uh, fire. Uh, the, the fire spear. Oh, wow. Nice. Most of this group gets a third attack. Will Clifford die? We have to get this Valkyrie destroyed quickly. No, Clifford will live. Unless she had crit there. And she did Well, she'd have to hit twice. A hundred experience for you, Clifford. But not all of you earned it, unfortunately. Tough group. Okay. This is some training with Bumba. That's quite a bit of goth. This is probably a more difficult battle. I, th I think they're on the front line. Our goal is to grow in both mind and body. You know the deal. Two cockatrices in the front line and a cleric. As long as we don't crit them. And as long as, as long as the cleric is alive, it won't matter if we do crit them. They can't be pushed back any spaces. Of course, this group's set to attack leader, so we'll kill the cleric right away. Okay. As long as we don't crit them... Anyone, any particular one twice will be all right. That's really annoying! <laughs> Missed five attacks against them. I forget, Bumba has that evil sword that sleeps things. Last person up is Penelope. Oh, what the heck? 1,462 goth. We'll still do it. Oh no! Oh, crap! Two cockatrices in the back rank! Well, this was a waste of money, because we're gonna- everyone's- we're gonna get petrified. There, there's no way we're killing them. Before- uh, before our back ranks get- uh, get petrified. So, the good news is that the petrification does not carry over into, uh, like, after the battle. It'll be removed. The bad news, though, is that I- they get two of these attacks! I don't see my back rank yet. I don't see my back rank surviving this. Yeah, and they, they're they also very dodgy. So, I... This is... I think we lost this fight. Yep. Yeah, we lost... I don't know who designed the cockatrices, but they did such a bad job on balancing this.
I don't think we, the petrified guys, even get any experience points for that matter. They're considered killed, if I recall correctly. So this is a this is a colossal waste of money. We're not hitting anything over over there with you, are we, Mister Mister Swordmaster? Who are you? Ivanhoe just keeps missing. That's so frustrating. God, I just want to <laughs> want to punch the person in the face who designed these things. We lost. We lost. Come on. What, who who thought these things were balanced? Who thought they were balanced? What an awful job they did. All right, that was a waste of 1,200 bucks. Doesn't matter. We're, we're never going back here again because it has the two cockatrice unit in it. That's a waste of cash if you encounter that group and you weren't prepared for it. Okay, awkward cut to stop Tim from losing his mind, apparently, at the end of that little segment there. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's the next day. It's time to do the scene. Uh, my goodness, I was so mad. <laughs> Way too mad uh, at Ogre Battle 64 for adding that cockatrice unit as a training target here in Temple of Birth. The good news is, though, is that gives you something to talk about when it comes to just general game balance the next time we do an area exploration. So we can go ahead and take advantage of the fact they added that battle to the game right there. I don't know why they did it. <laughs> That's not, I, don't think, I don't agree with it. Whatever. All right, let's go ahead and start the scene. All right, I think we're set. Let me make absolutely sure. So I think for items, we do still have a single champion statue, if I recall correctly, right? We do. Okay. I don't want to use that quite yet. All right. Let's go ahead and do it then. So, to Romulus... Scene 29, Betrayal. The way to Latium has been secured by the Revolutionary Army and the Church. We can now, we can now move freely without worries. Did we find out anything about Zevek's party? The Southern Tigers? We have no idea what happened to them. We have to expect the worst. I guess you're right. By the way, Hugo, are preparations for the assault on Fort Romulus ready? That's all taken care of. Take a look at this. Let's get started. Lubini, located in the southeast, will be our headquarters for this operation. Our destination is Fort Romulus, located a northwest of Lubini. We must liberate Fort Romulus and the outlying areas. The battlefield may seem small, but we expect this battle to be huge. Enemy units are spread throughout the area. It seems there's no way for us to avoid them. Not that I would anyway, Hugo. If we avoid fighting, we don't get experience points, which means we're weaker against the next scene, which means we have a better chance of losing. So we gotta kill everything. Same battle plan as always, guys. Kill every unit, liberate every city. This battle will be a tough one indeed, but don't roll over. Oh, we have no intention of doing that. <laughs> is, that is that your professional advice, Hugo? Don't give up? We don't intend to. I'm gonna look at this really quick as well. I guess I should tell you what I remember about this mission. So, first off, I don't remember anything about the mission itself. But I believe that the next video, the next scene, takes place here. And it's similar to the Temple of Birth battle. I don't think we're allowed to leave. And we have to do the next fight here. There's, And I, I'm going to skip the training as well because it wouldn't make any sense. Even if I'm allowed to train here... That doesn't make any sense with what's going on in the story. Because I think the next scene is our first siege. Which will occur at Fort Romulus. Can you spread the word that it's not our intention to slaughter the enemy? 
Oh, this, that's not correct at all, Magnus. Sorry, I <laughs> just said that just kill every single one of them. It's unnecessary to kill the wounded, those who've lost the will to fight. No, no, Magnus, no, 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 you're wrong. You're wrong. We, we gotta kill every single one of them, even as they run. The four singular wounded fairy limping along the ground, we hunt her down, run her over for the two experience points she earns. <laughs> you're wrong here, Magnus. You're so wrong. It'd be, it'd be interesting if your karma would be uh, based upon you attacking such wounded squadrons. But we would need some way to balance the experience gain with allowing units to run after their leaders, for example, has been killed. That's not the way this works at all, Magnus. You don't understand what you've been like in every single battle we've done so far. If I, I have to deploy you. I don't understand how you don't re realize this is the way this game works. Everything dies. Everything. I will do that. Though I, I think you're really wrong, Magnus. Didn't in your graduation ceremony? Did you say you wish for strife on this land? This is strife. You got you gotta gotta kill everything. Everything. If it moves, you kill it. <laughs> Stab it or shock it. It dies. All right. Winning condition: entering enemy HQ, Fort Romulus. Losing condition. Invasion of your headquarters. Death of Magnus. Mission. Start. Okay, let me put a small break here. Just because that was a fantastic intro to this actual battle. All right, and let's see what we're, what we're dealing Oh, my spreadsheet isn't up, guys. Uh, give me a second. That sucks. Okay, there we go. Spreadsheet up. Let's go ahead and deploy all the dudes and dudettes I'm having here today. My plan is to swap out, like, almost most of these squadrons to deploy here when we get into Rumless itself. I'm going to be alternating groups, uh, leapfrogging them, as it were, between missions now, since we have so many. And I would like it, every one of my squadrons to get screen time. Bell Duke comes along. Meridia. Ultra, Debonair, and Astrid. And we need to keep an eye open for a potential unit we can get into our army via Love and Peace. I would like to... Since we got both the Blue and Thunder Dragons, I do want both of them in our army. That means making one more squadron for them. Alright, morale 80 to start. So, Bumba. You can lead the charge there. Alright, we see a Volton flying toward us. What's in his army? A Griffin, two Hawkmen, and the Volton himself. You know what? We could deploy Dismas. And he can fight that? That's a hold on, that's a good aligned group, Tim. So you should fight it well. No one really needs their alignment lowered. Sure, we'll have Dismas fight that group. It's an easy group. Another Voltan. Griffin. I can't pronounce it. The upgrade Griffin. <laughs> Another Voltan. Alright, who's gonna fight that? Ultra can fight that. Once again, that's another easy battle. There should be there should be no problems slaughtering them. We have a swordmaster up here. Two goblins. Two ninjas and a swordmaster. Interesting. We can have Astrid. Kill that. Uh, destroy them. Another Voltan approaches. Astrid's already heading up this way, but she's a bad one to use against that. That's an entirely good aligned group there. Meridia. You can probably handle that. Astrid, I'm going to 
shift you here. A Freya. Oh, is this a Cockatrice Freya? It is not. Three Freyas, two Valkyries. I, I really feel this game should not be using tier two units any longer. The Valkyries should go. The Ninjas should go. They should be using Ninja Masters now and Freyas. We're so far along in the game, it's weird that they're not doing that. Uh, Debonair, could you handle this battle? I'm a little worried about our fairy taking a, a bunch of lightning damage or worse. Belduke can slaughter them. Oh, Dismiss, you were potentially facing the wrong way. Glad you actually got to engage with this group head on. Now, I feel at this point this enemy group should be three Voltans and the Opicanus. Similar to us, and not a weaker version of some of these units. We're in the final chapter. And they're set to attack leader. Excellent work, Dismiss. One leader destroyed, their units heavily damaged. And another unit killed. We can now just pull you back and you can heal here. We could chase him down with you, but I'll do that later. Belduke. Okay, let's pause. Bumba, I'm just gonna have you look this direction. Belduke, are you able to target? For now, you can. Okay, good. Yep, Ultra intercepts this group. This should be no match for us. The weapon that he's using, though, is a holy weapon, if I recall. I think? It might be an air weapon he's using. We'll be able to tell based on the color of his attack on, on one of our units. Okay, it's air. Or physical. Actually, it, yeah, air, air physical. So that, that's not a problem. And he's dead. Unless he resists. Oh, he did resist. Oh, that's super awkward. Okay, Meridia, just keep charging north. Ultra, we're gonna have you move back home to heal. And Meridia, you just look to the north. Astrid, we'll move you up to the mountain. Good. Belduke's gonna intercept the Freya. This miss, we're just hanging out here to recover. We need to hope there's an evil group, so a chaotic group somewhere out here. For Vin. Oh, that group does have four chaotic units in it. That's an awkwardly positioned group, but I think that will work. There also is a sorceress up here. That's a bit of an ugly fight, but I, th I think you probably can win that battle, Vin. A Remy. But you know, we'll have we'll have Remy move out here to fight this group. 
So we're going to also then shift a bit. Okay. And pause. After climbs the mountain. Yep, Meridia takes on this flying Voltan group. I think we destroy all of them here. Oh, good block, Sheen. That crit. Pushing them into a, that grouping. That's going to make Maria do a ton of damage to them. Oh, we'll lose Meridia actually here if we're not careful. Almost killed all of them. We won't catch the fairy. Unfortunately, thanks to the fact it flies. Meridia will move you back home to heal. That Bell Duke slaughters. This army. I am not worried. Oh, Rook could take a ton of damage from their front line. But that's what he's there for. Oh my god. Spinal, that was amazing. Did we wipe out this entire squad? I think we did. Holy crap, guys. Belduke, well done. Unfortunately, if we continue to wipe out entire squads, we're not going to be able to use Love and Peace to get us any of the units <laughs> that might have been left over. But it's also looking like we don't want the units from this area. At least I don't see any there attempting so far. It's really, I, I want a Black Knight, I'm thinking, or another Cataphract. I guess a Freya could work also. Okay, Astrid, you can rest there. Magnus, let's move you to the stronghold. Debonair can be moved out as well. As can Penelope. We let some of these guys just rest and recover. Astrid, let's move you down here. We succeeded in liberating Norle. Oh, here come the enemy. Okay, so first let's take a look and see, or visit the people here and see what they're saying about the situation as it unfolds. You're with the revolution? You should watch out. I saw one of your men talking with the Latium army earlier. They make such a big deal over who the betrayer is here, and it's obvious to me who it was, even the first time. And when I find out, I'm like, oh, like, okay, I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like this guy anyway. Have you guys figured it out by now? With that hint, we'll see. We'll see shortly when we get closer to the castle. Alright, Dismas, how are you holding up? You're good enough. We can send you out to wipe out what's left of this unit. Or begin chasing it down. Oh, there's also a shop here, so we should see what the shop has. So, Meridia, let's have you go shopping. 
can I have one of these and this? Oh, and that. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, Boulder Helms are for sale here. Let's get three of these. Oh. Glam drinks are for sale here. I feel like selling a named sword that's supposed to be rather unique, I thought, would be odd. But I guess they just mass produce these at some point. Are there elves? Are there elves in this world? I haven't seen any elves, so it's odd that it says that there's an elven blacksmith. We haven't seen any elves, or dwarves for that matter. I'm not seeing any other weaponry I care about. I don't think we need any of this. Boulder shields are nice, though, but I, I think we have upgraded shields on all my forces, so we don't need one of those. We could probably use two more boulder armors, or, well... Let's get one. And we don't need any other miscellaneous supplies. Uh-oh! Uh, Astrid's not going to be able to catch that guy. He's marching down towards the city. So, Astrid, we'll just have to leave you here, then. Remy, you charge this unit. Oh, what is this guy? Platinum Dragon. Two Valkyries and a Paladin. Bumba can probably handle that group. Hmm. Uh-oh. That's a lot of damage that's over to the left there. We might lose our Dragon Master. No, they're going after our leader. Come on, don't put Paladine to sleep. Good. Woo! I'm, I'm willing to use a Pedra here. Maybe we can get that la that uh, Imp in the back. We'll use the Virtue, because it should do more damage to them, since they are chaotic. Trying to sleep them. Do they succeed? They did. Good guard there, uh, Remy. I mean, I can actually rest you here. It's a bit awkward, but we can totally do it. And then pull you back to... Actually, we can use a heal leaf on you. And you could just fight that group a second time. Oh, Bumba's set to attack leader, I see. Oh god, thankfully they only get one of those, which isn't very balanced, but I am glad for, for it in this case. Leader destroyed. Good job, Bumba. Oh my god, a hundred... Oh, wow! Good job! And Aloe levels up. Bumba, we can move you back here to heal you. Remy. You'll just stay there, and we'll use a heal leaf. On yourself, that should be good. Penelope. Can you, maybe we can have you attack this unit. Good, we can. You should be more than a match for them. Swordmaster at the back rank is a terrible decision. They're set to attack weakest, I think.
because the Swordmaster is going to take damage as he swings that weapon from back there. Aisha taking quite a few hits. We didn't kill anything. Interesting. Let's see if they decide to keep pushing forward. And also, where, where does this army end up going to, now that we won? Into Astrid? Right into Astrid. Directly into her. So she's going to wipe out that squad. Did she need the experience points? No, not really. Two of her units are going to be way overleveled. She's going to wipe them all out. So I'm going to pull her back with a quit gate and then we give her a quit gate again. this stronghold. Penelope, you'll have to fight every group there if I continue to send you north. But I... Th can you handle... I think you can handle all, th all those battles, so we'll send you up there. I mean, here's a chance to try to get some al alignment down as a up for Vin. Good. Okay, Remy, and now we'll pull you back home. We can also change your formation back to what it was. Okay, and who's this Beastmaster approaching? Bean. Mr. Bean? Oh, he's a piece of cake. Um, Debonair can fight him. Lots of good aligned units here today. Wait, there's something here. Evil Spear. Okay. That's nice. Uh, how are your hit points, Ultra? You're still a little hurt, but you should be able, you should be able to tank for us if it comes down to it. Let's look. So we will, we do want to search for items here. I guess we can do that now. Ultra, let's have you march here. And then up the mountain. Remember, you're just going to sit here and rest to heal yourself. Tanky. Platinum Dragon on the front line here. She still dies. Unless she gets super lucky and it dodges one of these other two attacks coming to her. See, both of them. She has, she has to dodge both of them. She doesn't dodge either of them.
Alright, dismiss. I think we now pull you back home, unless... Do we want you to kill Maverick? Ah! Uh, sure. Keep chasing down another unit. The nearest sister waits for the enemy. We can actually rest you a bit, Dismiss. Someone should probably hang out here and just guard our capital. I guess Belduke can do that. Meridia will send you back out. I hate when they randomly put it on themselves. Since that's not going to help us at all for the rest of this fight. I guess the first round of com uh, the first combat it's in, I probably should put her in the very back rank. I always forget, always forget, Destin has two attacks from this, uh, three attacks, sorry, from the, from the third rank, second rank. Oh my god, Tim, <laughs> can't speak today. All right, Devonair, uh, you can just stay there. He's gonna, oh, he's not gonna attack, okay. Do we push you forward? What's the morale of this city? Eleven. So that's... We don't have anyone who has that alignment nearby. We sent Ultra to the wrong direction. Um, Ultra... Let's send you back this way. Good luck, Pen Penelope. Let's have you use a Power Fruit. I think we'll... Uh, you know what? We should just use a Heal Leaf to make sure that Aisha, Aisha lives. There's no reason why we can't do that. I didn't even check the morale of this city. Oh, it's the standard, it's the defender here who's guarding the city that we're fighting first. So it's a good thing we did heal Aisha. Actually, it didn't matter because she just used a heal, so she could have healed herself instead. Cool, 51 damage. Let's... Let's use a Pedra here. Yep, and Penelope can keep pushing. You know, I think they're gonna wipe out the squad and they only need like five more experience points to level. I always think about this sort of thing, how to efficiently fight the groups to give them experience points and not waste any, but we've totally wasted all of this one. So they had 24, they earned 48, they needed 30-something. Oh my god, 94, what a waste. Guess it didn't matter in the end, Astrid was also going to be overleveled killing that group. I 
That was a grod. I'm gonna say she should fight this group too, the Volton group that's here. Kill everyone. Actually, we should kill everyone. He has to block three attacks. Okay, and what is Bissell's morale? 11. So we're not going there with you, Penelope. Let's uh, have you come back home. Okay. Who's pushing out to Auto Chaz? What is Auto Chaz's alignment? 11. Okay. It's going to have to be Meridia and or Ultra. This was just still chasing down that Volten. Help, he's heading back here. The main city. So far, this has not been that difficult, by the way, Hugo. A, a few enemies charging our capital at the start, but they had weaker units in it, so we weren't really in any danger. Go get them, Dismiss! Good, good. I should level all of you? It did. Okay, rest you and then we'll pull you back home. Ultra, let's have you recover some of your fatigue. Now if he does the same. Belduk, you're, right, you're holding the fort, quite literally. Magnus, how much experience points do you need? Not too much to level one of your dudes. Nah, we'll wait to use you until later. Ultra, let's let you recover a little more stamina. This mess, you're coming home. Okay, and we can now send Ultra. Up there. And Meridia can take that city. So, oh, actually, we have a target coming out against us. It's Bean, all by himself. Good for him, man. That's dedication. He is slightly chaotic. So I am tempted to use Remy to pick him off. Oh, Vin's alignment is beginning to shift. I think we'll do this. She needs to be lawful in order for her to be a seraph. Meridia, we'll take on that stronghold. I think there's one imp left in that group that's camping, so we'll, we'll want Remy to do that battle also. Oh, Vin, if you get the kill, that would be even bet. That would be the best. Darn it! Good. You still got alignment up. Oh, I was so hoping you, I would see the the change. I think that might happen when you level. Actually, I think it happens when your alignment, when you have the stats and alignment to shift, is one that will happen. We have a Lightning Claw, I think. The first one of those we've seen. 
Remy, I want you to kill that imp. Okay, what do we have over here? Hicks! That's a, such an easy group. 72 alignment. Okay, that that's perfect for Magnus. So Magnus will put you down here and you'll attack that city. Ooh, I see a Diana guarding Fort Romulus. So maybe that will be a Pumpkinhead group. Good damage. Unfortunately, none fell asleep. Leader destroyed. Group will be much easier for us to handle now, but as soon as we fight them a second time, since they'll be uh, facing the wrong way. Okay, Meridia just takes the city. Hi! I finished liberating all the jazz! <laughs> I love the heart symbols that she speaks with. That's pretty amazing. Okay, we can probably push up with a few other people then. So let's move you up here, Penelope. Actually, Dismiss can just guard this city. Astrid moves up, as does Debonair and Bumba. Ultra wipes out what's left of this squad and takes this city as well. Good Ultra. You should probably wipe out the fairy who's up here somewhere, too. Kirikian, always a good item to find. I don't think we need any more of them, though. Hey, I liberated Belis. Alright, let's visit the cities. Lotus has left Latium. I heard that King Procus and Prince Armius drove them off. Do you think that's true? I'm not so sure. That, uh, you know what? We, didn't have, we haven't fought the Templars at the moment. I would have expected some of them on the front line to gain glory for their god. The big castle in the north is Fort Romulus. The Indians built it before Palatinus. The Oryx couldn't take the fort. The fort was defenseless against a progenitor. Latium uses it now. I love the history lessons we can get by talking with the people. They put a good amount of effort in making this feel like a living, breathing world. Alright, Remy, here's a chance to get some more experience points, uh, some more alignment up for Vin. Come on, Vin. No, oh crap, no! Uh, I was expecting that to sleep her. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. You, you still get alignment up. Yep, good. I'm just staring at you, Vin. But once I see that experience meter, I'm thinking you're gonna love, you're gonna shape change for us now into a seraph. Darn it. We don't need, like, any other equipment to level you up, right? Into a seraph. I think it's the same equipment that you have now. I might be wrong about that, though. I think the only thing you're missing is your alignment. Look at that poor cataphract running around up there. We'll have probably Debonair take him out. 
Alright, Magnus, we can rest you there. Uh, actually, Astrid could use some experience points, so we'll have... Oh, let's move Astrid into the city first. And what are we looking at here? Oops, I would have looked. We have four groups walking into the city. Okay, so Astrid... He'll wipe him out. Magnus wakes up, and then Magnus takes this city. I guess the reason why the units are a bit easier here is I I think it's supposed to represent that the forces here are weaker than normal in so much that uh, the bat like the fights against the demons have weakened them. So this is the forces they could muster. I oh, didn't kill anybody. I don't. Th I don't. I don't. No, we do kill everyone, because we have, yeah, we have a, a, one more attack on our Diana. We defeated them. Now what? Now we move you forward just a hair. I want to get a good look and see what's guarding the, the city. And you can wipe out that little fairy. Ultra, let's have you do it. All right, let's see who's the great betrayer after we check out these two groups. Daisy, with a red dragon and a flare brass. Not in the best positions, though. And Faye. Two, ooh. Two imps, the Diana, two goblins. Look who it is, everyone! It's Zevek, a superior knight! Did you guys suspect that? I, I totally did. And I don't care. Like, okay, he's... He's a bad guy. That makes sense based on his earlier altercation with... Frederick. An enchanter and four witches. What the heck is with these groups? I guess Bumba can fight them. He hasn't gotten too much experience points yet. Let's see, let's send you here, Bumba. And what's in... Uh, what's this city's morale? 17. You can't be the one to take the city, though. I guess Meridia can do that. I forgot all about you, Trimus, uh, Magnus. But this should have... Th this should have? This should be no issue. Alright, you're always set to attack Lear, so he's dead. Dead already. use a Pedra, but nah, this isn't that dangerous. Excellent work, Magnus. Keep pushing into him. Actually, you'll take the city first? No, let, let's wipe out the unit first. We found an item! Cloak of Oath. Interesting. Hey! Take a look at this! Another dowsing rod. We should be allowed to explore this location after we've taken Fort Romulus. So we sh we're not going to use a dowsing rod here, but we may want to use it when we're actually doing the siege. 
I think the sieges are timed. You have to finish them within a certain amount of, like, time elapsed. Or you lose, if I recall correctly. And that means that we won't get a chance to explore every road in the city when we finally make it inside. Well done, Magnus. Celestial Veil. That sounds like that's something that's needed for a Seraph. Okay, let's move on. Alright, Meridia, we can actually just rescue... Ultra slaughters the poor fairy, just as I was saying when he was telling us about, you know, sp we, we won't kill the wounded. No, 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 we we kill the wounded. <laughs> Every wounded gets killed. Every one of them gets wiped out. Because, because of what just happened right there. Because we need everyone to level up. I'm so sorry, game. You didn't balance this for us allowing them to live. A glam rock or something like that what that was called. Probably a two-handed fire uh, axe. Uh-oh. He's fleeing. He's fleeing. No. No, no, no. Go get him. Ow! We gotta stop him from running away! That's experience points we could use. <laughs> oh, no! I'm facing the wrong way with Bumba's group. This is very bad. Okay. Oh, ow. My fairy. Oh, they're gonna... Are they really gonna kill her? I hate you so much, AI. We can't keep our fairies alive. Oh, and she's dodging everything. That's also super awkward. Let's use a Pedra here. I was hoping that they wouldn't resist half of those. Good. Leader destroyed, at least. Hmm. That stinks. Poor Aloe. We do ha- You know what? Let's use it. Let's use the Altar Resurrection. Not allowed to die on us, Aloe. That was a mistake on my part. I should have faced Bumba to the north to deal with the enemies as they were attacking. Astrid, I get it. There are imps in here? Is that correct? Two imps. Okay, so let's shift Astrid's army around a bit. Astrid will wipe out what's left here. All right, Marau has been liberated. Magnus, let's visit the city. What is your plan? Prince Amaris is fighting Lotus to save this kingdom. Shouldn't you help him get rid of Lotus once and for all? Yeah, we should. But it depends upon how, also how he went about it. We see goblins here, which hints that he's using the uh, the bad powers to do this. 
Oh, it's a flare brass here. Okay, at least Allo won't... I don't think she'll die to this. Oh, it's Fire Breath he uses in the second position, not Crimson Note. Oh, that's a shame. We would have killed that Flare Brass otherwise. All of this charging forward so we can kill the Enchanter group before it flees. I think we use a heal pack here. Actually, no. The, the, group's, the group is really weak. We, we shouldn't need to use one. Intercept him! Intercept him! <laughs> it's so close! We got him! We got him. I don't know if we'll be able to kill the leader, because he's behind a witch. But of course, we're gonna try. Oh, they get to go first. That's gonna be super awkward. But that's... That's basically their entire side done. No, we can't use a Lampedra to help us here. We do win, and we killed one of them. But we didn't stop him from fleeing. I think we push him now behind the fortress and we can't catch him. Yeah, okay, that's it. We were unable to stop him from fleeing. All right, Bumba, let's have you then fight what's left here. And Meridia... We'll just have you look that direction. Whatever item they had, they get to keep. Assuming they had one. If she had attacked our Cataract, Troy, we might have lost him. Good crits, Bumba. Good crit, Troy. Okay, if I remember correctly, the city here needs a chaotic unit to take it, so Meridia will have you do that. Oh! He didn't flee! He just double-backed to the stronghold. Okay. Let's move you back up there then, Bumba. Ooh, using fair, uh, gremlins to tank on the front line. That's awkward. They only get one kiss on the front rank. I thought they got two. Same with fairies at the front rank. Man, those are weaker units than I thought they were. We can just rest you. Bumba, how hurt are you? Actually, we can just rest you, I suppose, just, uh, as well. Okay, let's move up the rest of these forces. Magnus would want to see if you have a special dialogue option. And Remy, we don't need you to move. You can just stay there and guard that city for us. Hi! I finished liberating the sea. Sinny! 
Thank you, Meridia. Let's visit the city. I can't believe you made it all the way here. Prince Amorous is powerful enough to make Lotus stand up and take notice. What can you do? It's time for us to support Prince Amorous. How did he do it, though? Once again, how did, how did he do it? All right, Ashton, chase him down. I, I guess we can use Ultra to explore more. And yeah, we're not our stronghold safe. We'll use Bell Duke a bit and see if there's anything on top of the mountain. And dismiss. Something like this with you. And then Remy. Check the top of that mountain. Bumba moves up a little bit to draw out that enchanter. Huh? What's this? Misty Coat. All this gear sounds like it's more powerful than what we're currently using, which is great. We're getting the final tier gear. Can we kill both gremlins? Yeah, it's going to be tough to kill both gremlins, but we can't hit them. There we go. Keep putting down that last goblin as well. Oh! <laughs> From across the mountain. I guess it gives us time to... Get everyone else ready to attack Zevrik. Zevik. I think he recovered from the sleep, but he didn't recover from the uh, paralyzation. Nope, he did not actually recover from either. Good work, Bumba. That eliminates the leader from that group. I don't think we'll get to destroy this group, though. Yeah, we're not going to get to destroy that group. Bumba, you're done. Let's move you back here. All right, when everyone here is recovered from their fatigue, we'll start marching towards the, the capital. Oh, Remy, we should keep moving you. Okay, and I think everyone is done, so let's start moving them out. So, Magnus will have you lead the charge. What does Zevrik have in his army again? It's two sorceresses, right? You should be able to handle that group. Debonair. I am a little nervous about you losing Dew, but we'll go ahead and have you fight. Penelope. Yeah, you can handle that group as well. Ultra, you can rest. Oh, we haven't killed the, the one goblin up there yet. But I think we'll be able to catch him before the rest of my forces reach Zevik. We may kill him right away with Magnus' group, by the way, Tim. So why don't you use Magnus second and have Debonair lead the fight?
Oh, no items in that group. Okay. Before I forget... Go ahead and... Change the order in which those units are in place in their formation. That's you're just gonna rest there now. So... Uh... Magnus, yeah, we'll have you just wait. Penelope will do the same to let Debonair get a little bit ahead. Oh my god, there's cockatrice in these mountains. We don't want to be here. There's a scroll of discipline that we can get from killing one of these. Okay, it got a, it got one of its two attacks off as well, which is good. Up to you then. Darn it! I was hoping you would change this to a Sarah. Alignment up though, very good. God, even one cockatrice in this middle was tough for us to kill. A revive stone. Okay. Not the best, but it is 500 worth of goth. Won't say no to that Penelope. To your march. Okay, that's good. Magnus. You two continue. Alright. Boss time. And Ultra, you're done. Dismiss, you are done. Now it's getting interesting. Zervik! So, you did betray us. Don't get me wrong. Independence from Lotus is one of our goals, right? I just gave one a higher priority than the other. What? Both the king and the prince gained the power above all. You know, the ultimate power attained by the progenitor himself. With that, getting independence from Lotus is a piece of cake. The ultimate power? No! You must not use that. It's the power of the netherworld. So what? The only thing that matters is power. Nothing else. As long as we get what we want, who cares about the means? If we succeed, we shall join the elite. Help me! For the future of this kingdom! You know we were not going to do that. Oh wow, he did 57 damage to Debonair, even though we buffed him. He's Oh, he's wielding an Ice Blade, I see. I wouldn't mind using a Pedra here. Oh, just lost Gilbert. Alright, he's dead. That sucks, because he might turn into a zombie. Let's use another Alempedra here. Of course, it doesn't hit the three hit point Paladin. Do we have an Altar of Resurrection? We do. So we're going to use it. Oh, so many altars being used. We'll probably need to spend some goth on more of those. 
But his army is now weakened to the point where this should not be an issue. Good, there is a special dialogue here. Magnus. I knew this was going to happen. Oh, Magnus. I knew this was going to happen. Zevik. Why did you do this? You're going against what you believed in. What you fought for. You know why you made it this far? Did you ever stop to think about those who suffered behind your glorious victories? Oh, shut up with this nonsense. This is more of a, it's your fault that everyone's suffering. We're sick and tired of this shit. You only pursued your ideals and ignore reality. We accept the reality. Don't insult us. Because we understand what really goes on in this world. Because we experience the tragedies ourselves, we try our best to reach our goals. We can only talk shit like that after winning the revolution. We'll do it over your dead bodies, Zevrik. Assuming you don't just mer crit Magnus and kill him. You're finished. Against the prince. I guess the royal blood, you don't have... Uh. Congratulations! Nice, another ice blade. That's a really powerful sword to have. All right, everyone, let me... I'm going to check really quick. I don't think I'm allowed... Oh, actually, first I'll save the game. I don't think I'm allowed to leave. Yep, yep, okay. So, yep, we're not allowed to leave Fort Romulus. I think we probably could do... Yeah, we can do training here, which is so weird, but I'm not going to be doing that. So, next episode, we'll just do the army organization, and then we'll go ahead and do the next scene. So, I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching, everyone.